Rocky's Boots was a game, and that game taught digital circuit design to seven-year-old kids. I'll just leave that sentence there while you mull it over. The game taught digital circuit design to seven-year-old kids and manages to be fun at the same time. It was created by a man who's a true legend, Warren Robinette. Robinette was the creator of Adventure for the Atari VCS. When the Atari VCS was first designed, it was believed that it would only be used for two types of games, paddle games like Pong and tank games like Combat. The design Robinette pioneered for Adventure created a pattern used over and over for different games, such as Superman, Haunted House, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and even the ill-fated flop E.T. Adventure itself is famous for two reasons. First, it's simply a triumph of efficient programming. Cramming an adventure with dragons, swords, a bridge, three keys, several castles, a bat with attention deficit disorder, and 30 different rooms into just 4,096 bytes of read-only memory. If you write Hello World on the computer you're sitting at in the language of your choice right now, or at least the programming language of your choice, it will probably use several times that amount of memory. While I can't be sure, I believe that this maze, which uses the player as a light source, might be the first use of this technique in a game. Haunted House would later build an entire game around this mechanic. Second, Robinette created the first widely known Easter egg in a video game. The process to find it was absolutely bonkers. You first had to bring an object into an obscure room, notice that the room was blinking, which told you because of the way the Atari worked that there was multiple items in it, use the bridge to get to an unreachable room, pick up an invisible dot, bring the dot to a weird wall that changed colors when objects were in the room with it, and then put other objects in the room until the wall blinked. Then, and only then, you could walk through the wall and see, in prismatic letters, the words created by Warren Robinette. So, we have established that Warren Robinette, by doing this, is already the coolest person that has ever lived. While it's on the Apple II instead of the Atari VCS, it's recognizably built on the same conceptual platform as Adventure. Your avatar is a rectangle. You move through square rooms arranged in a matrix. You pick up items by bumping into them and pressing a button, and then the same button drops the items. And as an adventure, the items affect each other. You radiate energy, which powers wires and circuit gates, so you can test what any component does just by touching it. The game is self-documenting. A series of chapters have you navigate the world, and the instructional text is on the floor of those rooms, neatly placed next to the tools you're learning to use. In short order, you learn about wires, how to connect and disconnect them, not, or, and, and gates, flip-flops, delays, and even timers. The heart of the game is Rocky's Challenge. The player selects a game, which sends targets in front of a number of sensors. Your goal is to build a machine that makes a boot, Rocky's boot, kick the right targets. Different sensors detect the shape or color of the targets. For example, here we're selecting a game to kick non-green triangles. If you kick non-green triangles, you gain points. Kick anything else, you lose points. Let's take a quick look at how the game plays.
Let's grab a NOT gate. We'll wire the NOT gate up to the green sensor. Then we'll grab an AND gate. The output of the NOT gate goes to one of the inputs of the AND gate. Next, we'll hook up the boot, remember the boot, to the output of the AND gate. Lastly, we'll get some wires and hook up the triangle sensor to the other input of the AND gate. Our machine is ready, so let's set the targets in motion. As each shape comes into the target area, the machine decides whether to kick or not kick based on the flow of electricity. If you watch the sensor's trigger, note how there's propagation delay in the wires. Timing is absolutely part of the game. The harder puzzles require you to take propagation delay into account. If you kick all of the correct targets and none of the wrong ones, Rocky Raccoon appears and does a happy little dance. Congratulations! Robinette didn't make Rocky's boots by himself. Anne Pystrup, an educational psychologist, got a grant from the National Science Foundation to do research and software development regarding early learning of geometry and logic using microcomputers. They formed the firm The Learning Company to make the game. In his book, Inventing Adventure, Robinette writes, The target audience for this microcomputer software was gifted second and third graders. My ideas about logic machines and adventure games fit within the scope of the grant, and the prospect of being able to develop these ideas for a year enticed me into joining the project. Mathematics educator Terry Pearl rounded out our team. Terry, Anne, and I explored the genre of the graphical adventure game with its animated objects and network of rooms as a medium for educational software. I implemented graphical adventure game software on the Apple II computer, adopting the conventions of joystick movement, rooms, walls, picking up objects, and so on, that I had used in the Atari 2600 adventure cartridge. The Learning Company was also known for its Reader Rabbit games, and was eventually acquired by Softkey, then Mattel, and eventually Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. If you're interested, the appendix of Robinette's book goes into detail about the architecture of both Adventure and Rocky's Boots, and it's available to read online at his website, warrenrobinette.com. The UI may be a little dated, but Rocky's Boots is still a shockingly playable game today, in emulation, and even though it's made for children, Harder levels will pose a challenge to anyone. The game has a big brother called Robot Odyssey that uses the same game engine but extends it to a world where you wire up robots to solve environmental puzzles. It has a reputation for being one of the hardest games ever made. If you'd like my advice, Rocky's Boots gives you most of the feel of Robot Odyssey with much less frustration. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn about another great retro game, leave a suggestion in the comments below or drop me a line at tea leaves on Twitter.